Hello everybody, um, welcome to this webinar and um, today I'm going to be talking about how to apply for your tier 4 student visa. So this webinar is for any students who need a visa to come and study at BU. My name is Barbara Montagna and I'm the Immigration Compliance Manager at the University and so I'm going to go through the slides now. Um, this is what I'm going to cover in the webinar today. Just wait in a minute for my screen to respond to my clicking. Okay, so what we're going to cover today is um, what BU and other institutions need to consider before we can assign you your CAS for you um, to apply for your visa, what the confirmation of acceptance for studies is, so what your CAS is, the documents that you need to provide when you're making your visa application, uh, maintenance, that's what the Home Office calls how much funds or how much money you need to evidence available to you. Uh, talk a little bit about credibility interviews, which could be part of your visa application. Um, the application process, and in that I will talk about the Immigration Health Surcharge, IHS, and also tuberculosis screening. And then at the end, I have um, a message for any students who are currently studying at the Bournemouth University International College. So first of all, the Tier 4 visa requirements. To be able to make a valid Tier 4 visa application, you have to earn 40 points to get your visa. And the way that this is broken down is you earn 30 points for having a valid CAS from a Tier 4 sponsor, and BU is a Tier 4 sponsor. And then you must also have the documents with you that we have written on your CAS. And I'll explain what documents those will be later in this webinar. You will need the details of your CAS number, the course start and end dates, what your course fees are, so what they are due, how much you have paid. And you need all of that information from your CAS statement to make your visa application. The other thing that's important is that when you make your application, all the documents you submit must be original documents. So that gives you your 30 points. Then you earn 10 points for your maintenance, which is showing that you have enough money to cover your BU course fees and also your living expenses. And living expenses is £9,135. So you'll need to show that and I'll give a little bit more information during this webinar. So the first thing you need to do is to start to prepare your documents. So you can start to prepare these as soon as your offer is unconditional at BU. And then when you receive your CAS from us, then you will be ready to make your visa application. So I'm going to go through the different documents that you'll need to provide. You'll need to provide your current passport. And also, if you've had any previous UK visas, you'll need to um, provide them as well. So you can see on the screen that you may have a visa, which was an entry clearance sticker issued in your home country. So that will be a sticker in your passport. And if you've had a visa granted whilst you've been in the UK, you'll have a BRP, a biometric residence permit. So if you have either of those, you need to submit that as well with your visa application. You also need to provide um, two passport size photographs. The UK VI, the UK Visas and Immigration, have very strict requirements on these photographs. So you can see from the picture on the screen now that the size of the paper of the photograph must be 35 millimetres wide and 33 millimetres long. You can't have anything covering your face. You have to have the correct background colour, which is grey or white. You can't be smiling or showing your teeth. Also, if you have glasses, we recommend you take those off. And if you have a fringe, I don't have one to show you, but if you have a fringe, you must make sure that that isn't over your face or making a shadow over your face. And then you need to print your name as it appears on your passport on the back of the photographs in case they get separated from your application. So there are some other documents that you might need. The first is if you have changed your name. So if the name that you have now is different to the name that you were born with, either because you've changed your name officially or you've gotten married or divorced, you have to submit evidence of your name change with the application. Also, if you've already been in the UK, it's possible that you've had to register with the police. So in the bottom right hand corner, you can see the police registration certificate. 
if you're applying from within the UK or you have had one of these from a previous time in the UK, you have to send this with your visa application as well. If your name has never changed or you have never had a police registration certificate, you don't need to worry about the documents on this slide. So when you receive your CAS statement from BU, and I'll explain later when you will receive that, we will include in the CAS statement the certificates that we looked at to be able to grant your CAS so that we made your offer and which qualifications we looked at to make that offer for you. You have to submit those certificates with your visa application. The certificates must have your name, the title of your award, the date of the award and the name of the awarding institution. Each document must be the original. You can't send a copy, even a certified copy. And if the documents aren't in English, they have to be officially translated. And later on in this webinar, I will explain how the Home Office or the UKVI require that official translations are done. So the other thing you need to show is your maintenance, which are the funds, the money you have available to you. You must provide financial evidence to show that you have got the 9,135 maintenance. So that's how much the Home Office have calculated. All students who are studying outside London need to have available to them for their living expenses, plus any of your BU course fees that you have not paid. If you are on a one year course, like a master's program, then it is um, the fees for all of your course. And if you're on a course that's longer than one year, then you have to have shown that you've got the money for any outstanding fees from your first year of studies. So if your course is four years, you don't need to have four years course fees in your bank statements. So an example is if your course fees are £15,000, you have already paid BU, your £2,000 deposit. You have £13,000 outstanding course fees plus the 9,135 for your maintenance, you will need to show in your financial evidence 22,135 pounds. So I'm now going to talk about what documents you can show the UKVI when you're making your tier four visa application to show that you meet these requirements. So you can use any of the following. You can use a bank statement or a bank letter, an official sponsorship letter, a Chinese certificate of deposit or evidence of an educational loan, for example, a US federal loan. If you're going to use a bank statement or a bank letter, the money must be cash funds, so it can't be in a frozen account that you don't have access to. And students can only use their own or their parents or their legal guardian's bank account. You can't use any other relative's bank details. So you can't use an aunt or an uncle or grandparents or your husband or your wife. The funds must be in the account for at least 28 days and you must be able to evidence on the document that it's been there for 28 days before you make your visa application. And you can use an overseas account or a UK bank account or a combination of both of them. That's not a problem. The most recent date that you used your funds, so the last transaction, must be no longer than 31 days before you make your visa application. So if you've not made any transactions in your bank account, for example, for the last month, you must make a transaction and then get a new bank statement before you use this bank statement with your visa application. All of your financial documents must include your name, your account number, if you're using a bank account, the date of the financial document, so the date it was created, the financial institution's name and logo, if it's a bank, and the amount of money available to you. If you're using bank statements through internet banking and you've printed them off yourself, you need to take the printout to your branch of your bank and have each page stamped by your bank. Even if there are any pages towards the end that don't have any transactions, any documents you're going to send must be stamped on each page. That is if you're doing internet banking and you're printing out your bank statements. If you want to use your parents' bank account, you need to have a parents' bank statement meeting the same requirements in the slide before or a letter from their bank. You must have a letter of consent from your parent 
for them giving permission for the money in their bank account to be used for your visa application and your course fees and your living expenses. You must provide your original birth certificate. This is to prove the legal relationship between you and your parents. And if the birth certificate is not in English or any of the other documents, they must also be officially translated. You can use this as a template letter. If you are using your parents' bank statements, you can use this template and complete it for your parents, but then you will need to give it to them printed and it will need their signature. So this is a letter that you can edit if you're going to use your parents' bank statements or bank letter, as well as your birth certificate. This is an example of the letter of consent that meets the UKVI requirements for your visa. You could provide evidence from an official financial sponsor. So um, the UKVI have given a definition of what they believe to be an official sponsor. So that could be your government, a UK government, the British Council or any international organisation or international company or your university. The letter from the financial sponsor must include your name, the name and the contact details of somebody within your financial sponsor, the date of the letter, how long they are sponsoring you for, so that should be for the duration of your BU course, and the amount of money that they are sponsoring you for, or they must put a statement if they're going to cover all of your course fees and all of your living costs. They must explicitly state that in the letter. If, for example, your financial sponsor is only going to be sponsoring you for your BU course fees, in addition to the official financial sponsor letter, you will also need to show other financial evidence, like your bank statements, to show that you have enough money for your, B, uh, for your living expenses during your course. If your financial sponsor is either a government or a large organisation, they will have a template letter that they use. However, if your official sponsor has not provided this type of letter before for a UK tier 4 visa, you can give them this as a template for them to use and the wording in this template letter meets all of the requirements for a tier 4 visa. Again, the letter must be in English. If it's not in English, it must be officially translated. For a scholarship or an educational loan, the big difference is that you don't need to show that you've had the money available to you for 28 days. If you receive a BU scholarship, we will write that in your CAS and you won't need to provide any more financial information. If you receive an external scholarship, maybe from um, the British Council or from your university, you will need to provide evidence of this with your visa application. So evidence confirming the sponsorship and how much it is for. If you have an educational loan, for example, the US federal loans, you will need to provide evidence of this loan with your visa application. If you are a US student applying for a federal loan, um, you will, can make contact with the federal loans department at the university. The email address is fedloans at bournemouth.ac.uk. And once we've had confirmation that your offer is unconditional, then we will post you a letter that you can use to prove these um, US federal loans. If the scholarship or the educational loan does not cover all of your BU course fees and all the living expenses, you will need to provide your own bank statements for 28 days to show that you have the rest of the required funds. So now I'm going to talk about preparation for credibility interviews. As part of your Tier 4 visa application, whether you're applying in the UK or overseas, you may be interviewed to confirm that you are a genuine student. You should pre prepare fully for this interview. You must have researched and understand the BU course that you're going to study and how this course will help you with your future career plans. You must make sure that you're fit and well and that you understand the questions. It's very important if when you if they contact you to have the interview, if you don't feel well or you don't understand the questions, you can let the entry clearance officer know and you can ask for clarification. We advise that when you have your credibility interview, just answer the questions honestly and be very clear about your intentions and your future study plans and your career plans.
On the BU website, we have extra guidance about the type of information that you will be asked about and uh, links to different information about the course you're going to study. So now I'm going to talk to you about the translation of the documents. If any of the documents aren't in English that you're providing, even if you're applying from within your home country, when you make your tier four application, you must include original documents and the English translation. If you have documents translated, it's not enough just to send the translation. You must also show the original documents. I'm just going to move my hands and then you can see me again because you can't see me at all now. So I'm just going to move. There you go. We've got very efficient lighting at Bournemouth University. If you don't move in a room for a while, they assume nobody's there and they turn the lights off. But we're back now. So the translation document has to include details of your translation company. It has to have confirmation that the translation is an accurate translation of the original document. It must be dated and the original signature of the translator or an authorised official must also be on the document from the translation company. So now I'm going to talk about the CAS and how and when you will receive your CAS. So BU will start to create your CAS from the end of June, so from the end of this month. The reason that we don't create the CAS any earlier is that students are not allowed to make their Tier 4 visa application any sooner than three months before the start of the course. So because your course will start in the middle of September, we will start to create the CASs from the middle of June. If you try to make a visa application earlier than three months before the start of your course, even if you have all the valid documents, your visa application will be refused. For us to create your CAS and to be able to send you your CAS statement by email, you must have accepted your unconditional offer and if your course requires that you pay a deposit, you must have paid this. On the day that we start creating CAS, if you have already met these conditions, we will start to create the CAS and send it to you. But once you meet these conditions, it should be five working days before you receive your CAS. So please make sure that you keep checking the email address that you used on your BU application, because that's how we will send the CAS statement to you. So I'm going to give you a little bit of information about what you're going to receive when you get your CAS statement by email. It's not a physical document. When we create the CAS, we create it online on the UKVI website and we summarise that information and email it to you. So you do not need to print off this CAS statement and submit it with your application. It's to allow you and to help you complete your tier four application form. The first thing you'll see is that there are four attachments in this email. The first one is helping you to calculate how much you need to pay for the immigration health surcharge, which I shall talk about. Then there is also a bank statement checklist to help you check your bank statements to see that they meet the requirements before you make your application. The document checklist so you can tick off and make sure you have all the required documents and also a document to help you calculate how much money you must have available to you in your bank account or with other funds. So on this first page, you can see that there are two arrows. The first arrow has Bournemouth University's sponsor license number. You must put this on your application. And the second arrow is your CAS number. So this is your unique reference number, which is a CAS for your Bournemouth University course. So when you apply, it will ask for your CAS number. You can't make your application without the CAS number. And then this second page has another two sections that are important. The first is your course fees paid. So when you receive your CAS statement, it's very important, first of all, to check all the details that we've created, to check your name, your date of birth, your nationality, that we've not made any mistakes, including your passport number. But also here you'll see where we have noted the course fees you've paid. So if by the time you make your visa application, you have paid more course fees than we've noted on your CAS statement, you must reply to the CAS statement email so that we can update your CAS with the UKVI. So the Home Office will expect to see any outstanding course fees that haven't been noted on the CAS. And then the bottom arrow in this section is the evidence used for your offer. So this is where you will see which certificates we looked at and which qualifications to offer you the place on your BU course. So all the certificates that we have noted here, you must provide the originals and if not in English, the official translation of these certificates. 
So this is how you can find some links to the application forms. If you're applying from within the UK, the link and the top line is a link to the form itself and you have three ways of making an application. Most students make a postal application which is 448 or you can do a priority application where you post your documents but the UKVI make the decision faster or you can go in person and have a premium appointment where you submit the documents on the day and the decision is made on the same day. If you're applying within the UK, it's only possible to pay by credit or debit card. If you're applying from outside the UK, the second link in blue has the link to the application form and the cost of making your visa application, the visa application fee, will vary depending on which country you are applying from. If you're not sure where your nearest visa application centre is, you can click on the blue link at the bottom and you can search on your country and it will show all the different places that you can make your visa application. So now I'm going to talk about the immigration health surcharge, the IHS payment. So in addition to making your tier 4 visa application fee, when you're going through the online visa application form, you must also pay the immigration health surcharge. This is not optional, you must pay it even if you're taking out your own private medical insurance and it will be calculated for you during your application. So here is an example of how much it will cost. If you're on a four-year undergraduate course, you will need to pay £675. If you're on a postgraduate two-year course, you'll need to pay £375. If you're on a postgraduate one year course, you will need 225. So this gives you an idea with the IHS fees as they are at the moment. Um, but when you go through your tier four application, it will calculate it for you. You need to pay that before you can submit your full tier four application. It's one of the screens that you have to go through. And as I said, it's not optional to pay. I'm going to talk now about TB or tuberculosis screening. So applicants from certain countries need to have TB screening before they can enter the UK. So you must have the screening before you make your visa application. If you are a national of one of these countries, it's an extra document that you must provide with your visa application and it will be refused if you don't provide it. To find out if this applies to your country and your situation, the blue link at the bottom is a link where you can search on the countries and the circumstances where you will need to have TB screening. Once your tier 4 student visa is granted, there's a few things that are really important for you to do. The first is that you should check your visa and make sure that there are no mistakes. If you note that there are mistakes before you travel to the UK, either with your name, your personal details, the length of your visa, or the conditions of your visa, maybe for example the work conditions, you should try to get this corrected before you travel to the UK. If you realise these mistakes after you've travelled to the UK, it's really important that as soon as you arrive at BU, you visit us at Ask BU, which is our student services department, and we will be able to give you advice on how to have it corrected. The visa issued in your passport, if you're applying from outside the UK, will only be valid for 30 days, and you will see the start and the end date on your, the visa sticker in your passport. If you are not able to travel to the UK within those 30 days, you will need to apply again for a new 30-day visa. You'll also receive a letter with a 30-day visa and you must carry that letter with you in your hand luggage. And then once you arrive in the UK, you'll receive instructions in that letter about how to collect your biometric residence permit, your BRP. So we're near the end of this webinar. I'm just going to explain a few useful websites for you. So first of all, on the BU website, the first link under Bournemouth University has our immigration pages, which gives you advice about um, visas and immigration. The second page under Bournemouth University gives some information about the credibility interviews and the kind of things that you might be asked by the entry clearance officer. The next section is the Home Office, the UKVI. So the first link under Home Office is uh, information and the application for the Tier 4 General Visa and the Tier 4 Policy Guidance. And the bottom section is UKESA, the UK Council for International Student Affairs. They're an organisation that work between universities and the UKVI and they have a lot of very helpful, very clearly written guidance and advice for international students coming to study in the UK. 
This is a message or separately if you are a student who is or is going to study at the Bournemouth University International College. Before you complete your course, we will work with uh, the International College and run a workshop to help and explain the documents you need to prepare for your visa application. And then when you have passed your course at the International College, we will book an appointment for us to check your documents before you send them to the Home Office for your Tier 4 visa application. So I'm coming to near the end of the webinar. Um, these are some really helpful links that you can click on to get some more information and to answer any of your other questions. So first is to meet BU in your country. This is on the left hand side under contact us. You can see representatives that will be coming to visit your country. Local contacts, so representatives that may be in your country. Online seminars and chats, you could look for online events. If you're in the UK, there is a link to our open days where you can come and have a look around our campus. Fees and funding if you're an undergraduate student and have any funding questions. And also course information. This is where you get more details about the units and the modules on your course. And then if you want to have specific information for international students, on the right hand side, there is the international page. And if you have any questions after watching this webinar, you can email the International Admissions team and their email address is internationaladmissions at bournemouth.ac.uk. I hope you found this webinar useful and please do contact us if you have any further questions.